Baltimore Cleveland County Board of Education employee is taking the principal of North Shelby School and others in the district to trial, claiming discrimination and wrongful termination. Wendy McKinney worked for the Board of Education for 15 years. Now, in that time, she worked in several roles from library assistant to bookkeeper, and she claims the principal used crude language and created a hostile work environment, which escalated after her high-risk pregnancy caused her to request medical leave. Well, McKinney says that her 2018 firing was in retaliation for her complaints of sexual discrimination and harassment by the principal. The school says they were legally permitted to terminate her. Well, our chief legal correspondent, Seema Iyer, was the only reporter in the Charlotte federal courtroom this afternoon for the final pre-trial conference, and she joins us now. Yeah, Seema, this is really a case, a hybrid of a civil rights case yeah. and also a wrongful termination sure. here. What is McKinney claiming? Okay, so there are 10 causes of action here, and I want to really break it down for everyone, and that includes actually punitive damages, which is a separate cause of action. So let's begin with first the civil causes of action. Also want to tell everybody that this case was initially filed in Gaston County, and you see this a lot where a case is filed within the state, but because there are actual federal claims, it gets meshed together and goes into the federal court. So the civil causes of action are wrongful discharge, intentional affliction of emotional distress, negligent infliction of emotional distress, unlawful retaliation, and FMLA. Oh, you know what? I'm sorry about that. FMLA is going to the civil rights claims. Okay, mm -hmm. so those were just for the, the civil cause of action. But then we go into the civil rights claims. And when we think of civil rights, the first thing that most people think of is the Civil Rights Act of 1964. Mm -hmm. And interestingly enough, I did not know this, pregnancy discrimination, uh, that act falls within the Civil Rights Act of 1964. And of course, everyone's heard of the American Disabilities Act. She's also filing a claim from that statute. And here we go. This is the FMLA statute that people are very familiar with. And then finally, what we like to call is the color of state law. Mm -hmm. And you see this a lot when people sue, let's say, a police department or corrections department for perhaps um, injuring an inmate or someone who's, you know, fleeing from the police. In this case, they're saying that the principal, the superintendent, the schools, they are officials. And when you're acting as an official in your capacity and you discriminate someone, then you are violating their civil rights. So that's how you get all of these causes of actions together. Okay, so let me ask you this. So today the lawyers for the school said that the plaintiff wasn't legally entitled to all this leave sure. uh, that she was asking for. So can you explain to us, kind of break down the issues between yeah. her disability leave and her family leave and why this is so significant in this particular case? I will try to, my friend, because it really did get kind of confusing in the courtroom because what I discovered today after listening to the arguments was that the plaintiff, she actually had a few medical issues. So she had this high-risk pregnancy, but she also had a bulging disc in her back. She had carpo tunnel. And because of her high-risk pregnancy, she wasn't allowed to get uh, the surgery for the bulging disc. Mm. She had short-term disability for these issues. She used up all her FMLA from when her mom... Uh, so sorry to say this, had suffering from cancer. So basically what the uh, county is saying is, listen, she, her 12 weeks, she has for an additional 12 weeks, and that was discretionary. They're not, she's not legally entitled to it. And one of the lawyers said in court today, short-term disability doesn't create a legal right to come back to your job. Because again, more testimony came out during this conference that is, they gave someone else her job, mm -hmm. and then that person got promoted. Mm -hmm. so, so it's just, it's a lot. It's a very, it's, very involved, complicated but case here. you see here, how but, important this is? I mean, think about yes. all the people, you know, whether it's women or civil rights and all of these issues, it's just so important. And the judge was also grappling with everything and whether this should even go to trial. What did, uh, what yes. did you get out of this? So I went today thinking, okay, this is on for trial, and technically it is scheduled for uh, February 22nd. Mm -hmm. However, 
What defense attorneys do in civil cases, it's like a criminal motion to dismiss, but it's called a motion for summary judgment. And they basically say, okay, is there enough to go? So the judge is deciding this, and he said, he basically, he gives all these like great quotes. One of his best quotes today was, somebody else is having to row the boat, mm -hmm. and that means that <laughs> somebody else took her job. Mm -hmm. He has a problem with that. He also has a problem with the fact that the defendants knew she had a disability, so they should have at least been put on notice. And I think he still saying like listen the issues aren't clear but bottom line when the issues aren't clear you know who gets to decide a jury take it to the jury people mm -hmm. all right last question for you before we wrap do you think she has a case uh, yes I do think she has a case because there's just so many convoluted factors mm -hmm. that I think best left for a jury with the aid of expert testimony well you gave us the context so thank you so much Seema Iyer my pleasure yeah